Hey everyone, welcome to my talk. Uh, like Dennis, I had to cram 20 minutes of uh, material into four minutes, so here we go. Uh, my name is James Banting, I'm uh, Vice President of Data at Spark Geo, uh, and this talk is about cleaning and processing global resource data for uh, game development. So earlier last year, we were uh, contracted to work on a, a game system on, on the internet. Uh, this is gonna be a global game, and they wanted a whole bunch of resource layers built into the game. Uh, it would be interacted with through a web map. These were not geospatial developers, uh, but they knew they wanted this data in there, uh, so they tasked us to go out and build it. One of the data sets uh, we looked at, and I'm gonna focus on it for this talk, was water. They wanted to know where fresh water was in the world so that they could map it. Uh, so we used the JRC Global Surface Water, the Joint Research Council. Uh, this is an excellent data set. Uh, it covers a span from 1984 to 2020, uh, and it contains all water bodies with an area uh, greater than 30 meters. So in the game development, this, this uh, came apparent when we um, put it on the map that they needed a higher resolution. Water moves quite a bit, and in a game, we can let the uh, game designers and our artists go in and make sure that tides flow and all this stuff without ruining the uh, geospatial component. Uh, and getting into things like the coastline problem and modifiable area unit problem. So we avoided those and it was, it was a lot easier than having to deal with those. Uh, this data set came in raster tiles. Uh, so there was 3,024 individual tiles. In total, there were 55.88 gigabytes. So there was a lot of tiles to manipulate uh, and build out. Uh, we put up a, a stack project for this, a stack package. Uh, if you were in Pete's talk earlier, uh, he mentioned where you can find these. Uh, we use the scientific and the projection extensions to describe this. The scientific extension uh, allows us to hook up papers that are published on this data set. So we can reference the DOI number so people could go, at, go back and find the provenance of that data. Uh, also, we added the projection data because we didn't want to manipulate any of the data sets too much uh, before giving it to the user. So we described it in its native projection system. And then as Pete mentioned in this talk, uh, stack items have to be described by GeoJSON, which is WGS84. So the projection extension allows us to uh, give both of these for the user and the user can decide. Uh, the stack packages, this is where you can go and find the, uh, the data set. Uh, so stack tools packages, JRC, GASW, uh, and this is where everything lives. You can download this, it points to the data, uh, and you can have your stack packages ready to go. Again, my name is James Banting, and I'm happy to talk about this after, uh, after this session. Thanks. Thank you.